Hey guys, how's it going? Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look at the Hydrostar Hydraulic Brake Line Kit here for our 2020 Jayco Pinnacle 5th Wheel. Our Hydrostar Hydraulic Brake Line Kit is going to be an excellent option here for our Jayco Pinnacle 5th Wheel. Now keep in mind, it's only going to be one of the other needed components we'll want when we're converting from electric drum brakes to hydraulic disc brakes. Some of these other components we're going to need are are going to be our disc brake assemblies here. We're also going to need a electric over hydraulic actuator and a breakaway kit as well if we don't already have one. So this particular brake line kit here is going to come with all the lines and fittings we need to reach from the back of our disc braking assemblies up to the hydraulic actuator on our trailer. On each of our braking assemblies here, what I really like about it is it comes with the four flexible hoses in the areas where we need them, which are going to be directly from the disc brake caliber up to our T's. And the reason we want this part to be flexible is because when our axle travels and our suspension moves up and down, we don't want to kink the hard lines, which is why we have these perfect little soft lines here that are going to allow us to travel in movement that we need. So here you can see under the trailer, we have the rubber lines we were talking about earlier. We have it fed into our hard lines here with the unions. We have these nice brass fittings which are included with the kit. These brass fittings mean is we're essentially not going to have to worry about any rust or corrosion issues, which we would normally with them being under the trailer here. And then we have it converted here to our hard lines, which again, this is all included with the kit. What I also like about this, you see we have these little clamps here. They're going to allow us to secure our brake lines to the frame or wherever we choose, so we don't have to worry about the lines coming loose and dragging the ground. And we're going to follow our hard line over here. You can see we have our union block here, which is going to feed the braking assemblies from both sides. And then the output of that is going to go up to the hydraulic actuator with our kit here. Now this particular kit has three 16 inch brake lines and our main section here, which goes all the way up to the front of the trailer is going to be 25 foot long. Uh, for our Jayco Pinnacle here, that's going to be plenty of length. So as you can see, we have hydraulic disc brakes installed on our trailer. However, our Hydrostar hydraulic brake line kit is going to work with both disc and drum hydraulic brakes. So a couple things I really liked about this particular kit here is number one, all of our lines are going to have a double flare on them. And what this means is it's going to have a really tight fit on our fittings. Or we're not going to have to worry as much with leaks. Now I've had some other kits where the double flare fittings weren't as clean. and We did run into some issues tightening the fittings, chasing all the leaks down. So in regards to the different types of brake line kits you can purchase here, when making the switch from high electric to hydraulic brakes, you really only have two options. You have the hard lines, which we have installed here. We also have flexible hoses. Now the flexible hoses are going to cost a little bit more than our hard lines. They are, however, going to be a little bit easier to install. However, the benefit of the hard lines here is they're going to be much more durable, which is why we chose those for this trailer. So in regards to installation, this is definitely going to be something that you can do at home by yourself in your driveway. Special tools such as a brake line flare kit aren't going to be required. However, if you have one on hand, it is going to allow us for a little bit cleaner installation because it's going to allow us to trim the lines for a more precise fit. But if we don't have that, no worries, it's not required. We would simply just loop our excess line up and secure it out of the way. So now that we've gone over some of the benefits and features, Let's jump right into installation and show you how to do this yourself. So the first step of our installation here, we want to take our four rubber brake hoses that come with our kit here. What we're going to do for the first step is we're going to go ahead and install one of these on each of our disc braking calipers. So what we're going to do is simply take either of the threaded portions or the exact same. There's going to be a fitting on the back side of our calipers that we're going to guide that into. We just want to get that started hand tight for now. Once we do get it started, we can come back with our 3 8 inch wrench here. But we're not going to tighten it down super tight now. We're just going to give it a couple turns to hold it in place. And then we can make the needed adjustments further down the road. Just like that. So once we have one installed, we're going to go ahead and repeat this for our other three disc brake calipers. So now once we have all four of our rubber hoses installed, what we're going to do is we're going to come to the rearmost axle on the trailer here. We're going to secure our rubber line to this portion of the frame rail here using a self-tapping screw and one of our clamps which is included with the kit. We're just going to simply slide it over like that 
then we're going to find a good position on the frame rail here that we still can allow our rubber hose to move freely as our axle travels. We don't want to get it binding too tight and cause any issues with breaking. So around here, it's going to be about a good location. Move it back a little bit because again, we want some extra slack on our line. And then we're going to take our self-tapping screw here, just drill it into place. And again, we need to do this for the rearmost hose on our rear axle here, both sides. Just like that. Now again, we need to repeat this process on the other side of our rearmost axle. So now we're under the trailer here and we have a portion of our 3 16 inch brake line. Now there's gonna be a couple different lengths that have come with our kit. We're gonna have the longer length, which is gonna reach from the front of our axle all the way up to the actuator. We're gonna have a length that is gonna be used to cross the distance of our two axles. And then we're gonna have two other brake lines which are gonna be the same length and they're gonna be used to bridge the front and rear axle. So we're gonna take one of these lines now and we're gonna attach it to the fitting that we just secured up on the frame rail using a union adapter, which comes in the kit and looks like this. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a half inch wrench and a 3 8 inch wrench, and we're first gonna install this union onto the flexible hose that we just secured. So we're just gonna do it again, hand tight for now. Spin that on there. Going to use our half inch wrench to hold the union in place and then our 3 8 inch wrench to tighten the fitting from the flexible hose into this union. And again, nothing needs to be super tight right now. Then we can take our brake line here. And go ahead and thread that into place as well. Just like that. So as you can see here, we went ahead and routed the rest of our brake line up facing the front of the trailer. However, we have quite a bit of excess because we needed to stop where our T is gonna be, which is gonna be roughly directly in front of our frontmost axle here, right above the caliper. So what we're going to do is, you have a couple different options here. We're actually just gonna mark this line here about where we want to cut it. We're actually gonna put a new flare a fitting tool at this point we need. However, the other option you have is if you don't have a brake line flare tool kit or you don't want to mess with flaring your lines, you can simply coil the line here then tuck it up and zip tie it to this underbody panel here. However, it's going to be a much cleaner installation and a better look if we go ahead and cut and flare the line here. So that's what we're going to do next. So now we're going to take our little T-block which is included with the kit here. It's going to have four different ports on there. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna thread that, one of this end, either end, it doesn't matter which way, we're gonna thread that onto the brake line that we just flared here. We're not gonna worry about getting that super tight right now because we still wanna get everything positioned and then we'll come back and tighten everything down. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and take this port here. We're actually gonna install the rubber hose here from our forwardmost axle. Again, everything's just real loose right now until we get it all in place and then we can tighten it down. So now we need to go ahead and secure our line here with our lock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the smaller clamps that go around the brake lines. We're gonna go ahead and attach that here. Keep in mind, we don't wanna tighten this all the way down because um, it's gonna pinch the brake line. If you have some extra washers, those are gonna come in handy as well. I'm gonna go ahead and install this just to hold everything up into place. Also, if you have trouble um, getting the self-tapping screws into the frame rail, you can go ahead and drill a pilot hole ahead of time as well. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process in regards to flaring the line that runs between our two axles on the other side of the trailer. One end is going to go into the line we just flared, which is pointed towards the rear axle here. And the other end here is going to be the rubber hose from our braking assembly. That's going to go to the far end here. So 
So again, we're just going to loosely thread these into place now. And we see our final line here, that's going to go across the axle to our other T we installed earlier. But before we move on, we're going to go ahead and secure this line here to a hole that we have drilled in the frame for this. So as you can see here now, we just went ahead and used a couple zip ties to secure our existing T's and lines here to an existing hose on the trailer here. We were going to use a hole in the frame of the trailer, but it was pinching our line too much, which is why we just zip tied it here. So as we told you, we're going to have one fitting left here on our little T block here. We're also going to have a couple lines left. Uh, we should have a, a very much longer one that's going to run from the front of our T to the actuator, and then we should have other one brake line as well, which is what we're going to use for this next step to bridge our two T's together. So we're going to simply take one end of our fitting now. We're just going to loosely install it into our little Y here. Just going to give it a couple turns to tighten it. Now once that's done, we're going to want to take this line here. We're going to run it over to the other side of the trailer. Keep in mind, we are going to have to find a way to secure it to the underbody here. As you can see here, we have a zip tie holding our brake line to this underbody panel here. They're not, there's not really a whole lot of ways we can use to secure our brake line running to the other side. However, this is going to be the best method. We'll show you real quick how this is done. So what I essentially did is, I'm going to pick a point about six inches to a foot away from our tie down there. What we're going to do is we're going to take a razor blade and we're going to cut two slats on either side of our line here into that protective panel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a flathead screwdriver and all I'm going to simply do is I'm going to try to loop it through either end of these. So it's going to try to come in the one we cut and come out the other. Just like that. We can see our screwdriver poking through both ends. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take a zip tie we're going to use that opening we created with our screwdriver to slip it through there. That way we have a nice and easy way to secure it. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and clip off the excess. And we can repeat this process about every 12 inches or so until we reach the other side here. So as you can see here, we have a couple zip ties here that are just used to secure our brake line to this bottom panel here. And we just made a little kink in our line here because we had a little bit longer, but it wasn't enough to justify flaring it. So we went ahead and just attached that once we bent it to the block here, which has our other two fittings attached to it as well. And the final fitting we have here, is in this block here, that's going to be for our longer line with the kit. That's going to run to the front of the trailer and to our actuator. Now keep in mind, if you don't want to run the brake line here under the panel, you can undo some of these fasteners and run it up above there. However, that is going to take quite a bit longer because there's going to be quite a few more fasteners you have to do to drop this panel down. So now we went ahead and took our longer brake line here, which is included with the kit. It's going to be going from our T here in front of the uh, forward most axle all the way to the storage compartment under the overhang of our trailer, which is going to house our actuator. So again, we went ahead and unraveled our line here. Now we're going to go ahead and make our connections and then we'll show you along the way to where to secure it. So now we're going to start about midway point of the trailer here. As you can see, we have these little storage containers here. We're actually going to need to go over these, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our brake line here. Keep in mind we have the fitting pressed all the way forward, and now we're just going to feed this up and over these storage containers here. Once we got a handle on it, we should be able to pull it down here. What we're going to do next is we're going to come to the inside of our landing gear leg here, or our jack. Then we're going to route this, pull as much line as we need, so we can reach the fitting in front of our forwardmost axle. We may need to bend the line slightly to get it to conform to the way we need it. But now we can come over here. Once we have the correct amount of line, go ahead and make our connection here. Again, we may need to bend the line a little bit to get it to sit the way we want.
Now we can go ahead and just tighten it down. So now we're going to take our line here. We're going to begin securing it to the bottom of the frame rail. In order to do this, we're going to take these self-tapping screws and these little clamps which come with our kit here. So we're going to slide one of those over there like so. We are going to make a bend here because we don't want it rubbing on that metal. And we're going to do our best to try to drill into the bottom of the frame here. It is super thick material so it is going to take a little bit of force. And keep in mind again we don't want to tighten these all the way down. We want to allow some wiggle room so we don't pinch our line. So now that we have this first clamp tight, we're going to go ahead and take some rubber material or even some electrical tape. We're going to go ahead and wrap this brake line here where it meets the frame rail because we don't want it to rub a hole or puncture it. And then we can go ahead and repeat this process using the clamps that come with the kit and self-tapping screws and secure our brake line to the bottom of our frame rail here. I would recommend about every 12 inches we have a new ring clamp to make sure it's nice and secure. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Now just to show you here, a couple of the tie downs we used, those C clamps running all the way to the front of the trailer. We actually have them spaced about two feet apart, which is still going to be fine. It's a really thick frame rail here, so it's hard to drill into. So we tried to minimize that as much as possible. And we see we have our final clamp here, which is going to lead us to the front of the trailer. So we're going to show you how to get this line up into the trailer now where our actuator is going to be. So here under the loft we have our storage compartment and our fifth wheel and this is where we're going to locate the actuator. Now we have our brake line sort of ran just loosely under this location here but we need to get it up in this compartment. And this bottom panel here is made out of wood so it's going to be a lot easier to drill through than some of the metal components we have through the side here. So we went ahead and just roughly placed our actuator where we think it needed to be. And now what we're going to do is we went ahead and make a mark here. We're going to drill a hole here using a step drill bit so we can then run our brake line from underneath the trailer inside the storage compartment here. We can attach it to our actuator. So now you can see we have our hole drilled here. So we're ready to route our brake line from underneath the trailer into the storage compartment here but we have quite a bit of excess. So again, if you don't want to do any cutting and flaring, you could easily just coil this line to avoid that. However, since we have the tools on hand, and it's a fairly simple process to do, at this time, we're gonna go ahead and cut off some of the excess so we can easily, more easily route the brake line into our storage compartment here without having to make any coils. So as you can see, we have our line trimmed here. So what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna go underneath we're going to slip it through the hole, try not to make too many sharp bends. So now we can come up and go straight to our actuator. And now that we have everything installed, that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the HydroStar Hydraulic Brake Line Kit here for our 2020 Jayco Pinnacle 5th Wheel.